truth be told, when you first purchase an iPad, the battery life is almost unbelievably good. But as time wanes, so does the life of the battery, and at some point you may be in the position to pull the trigger and replace that battery. Using a heat gun, apply heat only around the perimeter, the very border, because that's where the thermal adhesive exists. And if you go too far in, you may damage the digitizer or the screen. Using a blunted wedge tool, separate the screen from the casing. Slowly and gently work your way around the entire iPad, bearing in mind that slower is better because you don't want to tear it off for risk of damaging the screen. If you need a little extra heat, don't be afraid to use it. Remember, if you find this helpful, click the like button. Let me know you'd like me to continue creating videos by hitting the subscribe button. And as always, I welcome comments. Be most careful around the corners and the bottom right hand corner in particular. That's where there's a ribbon cable that attaches the LCD to the main computer. As tempting as it is, don't yank that clamshell open because of that restrictive ribbon. Position it into a comfortable spot where you're able to release it from the primary computer. Unscrew the shielding. and remove the pin connectors. Undo the screw from the battery housing. What this does is it screws down into an attachment pillar. In a similar respect that the iPad's screen is connected to its casing, the battery is connected to the back casing by a thermal adhesive. Pry the battery apart from the casing. Now admittedly in this video, I've already replaced the battery once, so mine's going to come off a lot easier than you'll find that it comes off the very first time you remove it. If need be, add a little heat from the back side where the battery cells are, and that'll help release that thermal adhesive. At this point, the battery is only loosely attached by that pillar. I'm gonna level with you. This is the second hardest part, but I've found it's easiest if you slip a screwdriver underneath the battery and wedge it up and over the top of that pillar. Not all projects go perfectly and as you can see I snap off a tip on the black retaining plastic. But that's okay because we'll just screw it in at the end. Now for the hard part. Slipping the hole in the PCB over the pillar. With much trial and error I've found the easiest way is to put it in the correct position and then using a screwdriver or wedge tool pry the motherboard slightly up so that you're able to raise the PCB over the mouth of that pillar. All right, now let's put it all back together. 
One thing I want to mention just in closing, at least with my experience, when you purchase batteries, generic batteries, off of eBay, they're usually only 10 or 20 bucks. But I have never seen the lifespan of one of those generic batteries compare to the outstanding lifespan of a genuine Apple battery when you first open it up. So don't be disappointed if your battery doesn't last six days. It's going to be better, but it's not going to be like brand new. Thank you for watching, and I hope that your fix-it job goes as well as this one did. As you can tell, she's charging up.